Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on find all groups of farmland. And in this one you have a matrix and zeros represent, um, uh, I guess zeros represent nothing. And then one actually represents land. So all groups of land are going to be a rectangle. And you want to, for every rectangle, return the top left and bottom right corner of every single rectangle in this thing, basically. So like here, the top left is zero, zero, and the bottom right is zero, zero. So you'd return it in the format of top left and bottom right. So top left, bottom right. Um, and then this rectangle is top left is one, one, bottom right is two, two. So that's what we want to return. Um, here, there's only one rectangle. So top left is zero, zero, top right is, or bottom right is one, one. And here there's nothing, so you should return nothing. So essentially what we can do here, um, you could do like a BFS or a DFS, but because it's a rectangle, it's actually pretty easy. What we can do is whenever we get to a one that we haven't visited, we'll have a visited set, we can just iterate to every single column in the end and every single column down. And then whenever we hit a zero, we're done with that column. And then whenever we hit a row that's zero, we're done as well. So let's kind of walk through what that's going to look like. So essentially we start here. Um, and then also while we iterate, so we're going to mark, we're going to save this top left cell. And then the bottom right cell will be the last cell we visit because we're just going to go row by row by row. So it'll always be the last one. So here, we're going to start here. Then we're going to check. So we're, remember we're iterating all the way to the end of the column and all the way down until we hit a zero in, in any direction. So we hit a zero here. So because we hit a zero, we're done with this row. Then we go to the next row and we hit a zero. So we're done from now on. Like as soon as we hit, as soon as we go down and we hit a row that's zero because it's a rectangle, we know like none of this will be part of our current rectangle. Um, okay. And then like here, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. There's nothing. And when we iterated, we're going to mark this one as visited and that's it. Um, so then we, you know, go to this next one and we kind of do the same thing. So we start here, mark it as visited and we mark this as our bottom right location. Then we go right, mark it as visited, bottom right location. Now remember we're looping all the way to the end and all the way down. So we go to the next row and this is also a one. So we keep going. So we mark it as visited, mark it as our bottom right location. And then we go here and mark it as visited and mark it as our bottom right location. And then, so the top left is here, the bottom right's here. So you can basically just like for every single one, just treat this as like a sub matrix and just go all the way. So wherever it is, like, let's say we're here, we'll iterate through this whole thing. And then when you're, whenever we hit a zero, we can just break out of the loop. So whenever we hit a column zero, we'll just go to the next row. And then whenever we hit a row zero, we're basically done with both loops because that's the end of our rectangle. And it's kind of easy. And then, so the only directions, so we actually, we don't even need directions. We can just literally do a nested for loop every time we hit a one. And because we'll have a visited set as well, we're going to ensure not to like start these nested for loops at numbers we visited before. So it's going to be pretty simple. Um, yeah, so let's code that. So we'll have a visited array just like last time. And so we'll have um, a couple things. I guess we'll have rows will be land length. We'll have columns equals land zero length. Then we'll have a visited set. Um, it can just be Boolean. Um, you can also modify input in place, but generally it's not the best, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, and actually, this is going to be it's not that. It's going to be Boolean array like this. So visited equals um, new Boolean array. And it'll be length rows by columns. And that's it. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a result array. Uh, let's see what format they want here. So it looks like it's an array of arrays. So we'll do that. So we'll have result int array array result. We'll make it this uh, new. Oh, actually, we need to figure out the length of the thing too. Um, and we don't really know the length of it. So I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make a list and then we'll have to convert it to an array probably. I'm thinking, or we can uh, actually, so I think I have a better idea. So we can make, we can do a list of uh, int arrays result, and then we'll just go through all of these and put it into this thing, into this final thing that we're outputting. So we could do that. Um, so we'll just make this like new array list, 
familiar with this because we don't really know we can't really like know how many um how many of these arrays there are we don't really know ahead of time so we'll just make an array list so we can just keep adding things to it <clears throat> okay and i think that's all that we need we'll, we'll make like an output thing later but that's pretty much it um let's turn on this so see if you get in ears okay so we're gonna loop uh through every single thing so we'll say like for i to zero i is less than rows okay okay so basically we care about cells that are one that we haven't visited yet um and if we get to those then we'll do this nested for loop starting at that cell so if um, land ij equals one and we haven't visited it, so and visited land. Uh, There's just gonna be this. I j is false. Then we can do our nested for loop starting at the cell. So we'll just do another thing like this. So except instead of i and j, we can make it like two other variables, I guess. Um, so like km or something. You can have like better naming, but this will be fine. So, uh, yeah, this will be fine. Um, and basically, what we're gonna check for the row first, so if the item, like let's say we start here, and when we go down a row, we're gonna start at the column that we started at. So we can just check if the item at the row and our starting column is a zero, then we're kind of done with this nested for loop. So if um, land, at our current row, which is K, um, and our old column is J equals zero. Definitely pretty bad variable names, but you know you can rename it something better. Um, I guess we can even, yeah. So if this is zero, then we're done with like everything. So we can just break out of this whole for loop. Um, otherwise we do this nested for loop. Um, and for the column, kind of similar. So whenever we get to a column that's a zero, we're done with this like whole row. So we'll just break out of this column. So if um, land, so this is gonna be the current cell. So the current cell is just km. Um, if km uh, is zero or visited, it will never have visited it already, I guess. I'm starting to think if like, do we even need a visited set? If we do the if we do it this way, yeah, we definitely do need a visited set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we definitely do need a visited set. But when we do the inner nested for loop, as long as the first cell is viable, then I don't think we need to check for visited. Because like, let's say we're here. When we start here, we'll mark all these as visited. Then we'll go to this cell, and this is already visited, so we're not even gonna like start the for loop. So if there's a cell that we start the for loop in, then everything that in the rectangle is guaranteed not visited. I believe. Okay, anyway, so if this is zero, then we're done, so we can break. Um, otherwise, now we do all our actual logic. So uh, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna mark it as visited. So visited km equals true. Um, then the other thing we want to do is we want to mark this location as like our um, last row and last column. So I believe what we want to do here is we can do that here. So we can say like int r2 equals uh, i, int c2 equals j. And then as we go, we just update those. So we can say uh, r2 equals m or k. Um, definitely hard to follow with these variable names. M. Okay, so now that we mark those, um, I think we just keep going. And so this will basically handle, like, I think that, that, sh that should take care of everything we need. And then all we need to do at the end is just, we'll have an array of I, J, which is our start, or yeah, our starting cell. And then, um, and then R2, C2, which is our end cell. So we need to put that into our result list. So we can do result add new int array. And this is going to be um, ij r2c2, like this. So we add this in, 
And then finally, so our result is just going to be an a list of int arrays. I believe there is a method to convert it into an array. I don't know it off the top of my head. So we're just going to make a new result. So we'll call this like maybe int array output or something equals um, new. How do I want to do this one? So we know the we know the length of it. Like the length of it is going to be the same as this. I guess the the width of it we know as well. So the width of each subarray is going to be um, four items wide, I believe. So I think that should work. So let's see what happens. So this is going to be new int array. So this part is going to be result size, and then this will be four. And now we can just go through all of our arrays in our result and put them in here. So we can say for uh, int array per something in result. We can put these all in output. Um, We probably want a variable. I guess we can just have a variable here so we can say like int i equals zero and just update it. So we could say uh, output i equals cur. I believe that should be fine. We can just copy that raise in like the whole thing. Um, I believe this is fine. There's obviously like better ways to do the Java part of this, but I believe this should work. And yeah, there's probably a better way to convert from a list to an array. I'll look that up for future problems. Um, and let's see what issue we have, if we have any. Syntax error, insert semicolon. Okay, let's see. Um, I guess we'll figure out our issues now. So array index out of bounds. Uh, this should be um, K, this should be M. So definitely terrible, terrible, terrible variable names. The only thing about these is you actually do need a lot of variables. It's kind of hard to come up with like great ones. Like you'll have like row, row two, row three and so on. But um, let's see. Okay, so it looks like we have a problem here. So this should be zero, 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 which is fine. One, 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 which is fine. But okay, it looks like we're not correctly adding to our visited set is what's going on. So let's make sure we do all of that. So, so here it's visited is true. Um, yeah, let's see if the rectangle, let's see if the bottom right of the rectangle is fine. So this is one, one. Okay. This is also not right. So this should be two, two. So it's not looping down correctly as well. So let's see what our problem is. Um, so this is, oh, this should not be K equals zero. This should be K equals, it should start at the current row in the current column. That's probably it. So like this. Okay. It definitely shows some Java not mastery, but definitely we'll all look into this and we'll look at how to make this cleaner. But the basic um, principle is pretty easy. You just start at a cell and you just go um, all the way down until you get to the cell. Uh, yeah, you can't really go diagonally because it's a rectangle and you can't like binary search or something because you might miss something in the middle. Like you might have something like this or something. And then you, you can't really, you don't really know like where your rectangle ends. So you can't like binary search. Um, so I think you just have to traverse the whole thing and yeah. But you don't have to do like a DFS or BFS because you know it's you know it's a rectangle, so you know it's um predictable. So you can just like go check all the ones here, check all the ones here, check all the ones here, and so on and so on. And as soon as you hit a row that's a zero, you're done with your rectangle. So the uh, rectangle part makes it predictable, makes it easier to traverse. The annoying thing is, yeah, you do kind of have this mess of nested loops. So this is going to be actually O of n because we have the visited set. So what's going to happen here is like we get to a cell, we'll traverse as far down as we can. But then when we get to the cell again, we're going to skip doing the whole traversal. So we might get to a cell like two or three times or something, but it's never going to be um, O of M anything more than squared. So this is N by M and space for the visited set is N by M as well. And obviously for that thing that I made, that was kind of a mess. This result thing um, is also N by M. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm like 99% sure there is a method that like does this for you that will convert an array list to an array. But I don't know if it's off the top of my head, I'll look it up for in future videos. 
But regardless, um, that's going to be all for this one. I can quickly show you the Python solution. It's a little bit cleaner. So I use directions here, but I don't think I even use them. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but it's just a lot cleaner. But essentially, yeah, it is kind of a mess because you do have like these four loops and you have to have different variable names. And so this is also not great variable names, but same kind of idea and works the same way and pretty efficient. So yeah, that's going to be all for this one. And if you did like this video, uh, please like it. And I'll, as always, I'll uh, upload the code and everything. And I'll see you next one. Thanks for watching.